All right, Sketchpad Podcast, we back. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page. All October. We're going to get this. Go get this look, man. All October. I'm just letting y'all know now. So, if it looks creepy, I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, we're going to get into this Tupac thing. Uh, the murder of Tupac and what we believe happened. So we'll be back. Who raised you? was crazy oh my god uh, children are too young to make those type of choices for themselves you know that's why they have parents oh eat each other what yo i can't, can't understand it neither i'm just ahead of it now all right man we back so let's get into it man we're gonna play some of this video and then we're gonna come back and discuss let's go Police have finally charged a man in connection to the murder of Tupac Shakur in 1996. I think he was only 25 years old and what he was able to achieve in that time, none of us can compare. It felt like there was a cover up and that we would never find out the truth because so many people were involved in this. They blamed P Diddy, they blamed Suge Knight. Suge Knight was in the car and even he was suspected in setting up the shooting because Tupac was gonna leave his record label. And there was all that beef with the notorious B.I.G. Even the police were suspects in this because a lot of police officers were working when they were off duty for these crime gangs like Death Row, uh, the record label that Suge Knight was head of, who Tupac worked on, and P. Diddy as well. He had cops on the payroll. So nobody was trustable in this scenario. People gave up hope a long time ago that we would ever get the answers. Tupac's mother was campaigning for decades to find out who did this to her son, and she has since died. There there is no justice for anyone really it's too little too late but at least we have an answer now now let me take you back in time to the night of the murder september 7th 1996 this was the night of the mike tyson fight against selden in las vegas tyson and tupac were very good friends tupac had referenced tyson in a lot of his songs and as always tupac when he rolled up to these places he was deep he had all of his guys with him and it was a problem for anyone who they recognized. Unfortunately, for a guy called Orlando Anderson, who was a crip, a, a rival gang to the Bloods that Tupac had with him, they spotted him in the lobby of the hotel where the fight was taking place. So you'll see the CCTV footage here in the hotel lobby. Tupac had already attacked Orlando Anderson. They'd had a previous beef, and you can see the guy in the white here, that's Shug Knight, who was putting a beat down on this guy as well they're kicking him and as far as they're concerned it's point proven Tupac is seen walking out of the hotel here strutting as if he owns the place now as far as we're aware Tupac and Shug then make the decision to go to a nightclub called the 662 which is the digits on your phone for MOB it's mob owned mafia type shit where they've owned this nightclub and this is where they hang out and this is the final photograph ever taken of Tupac and Shug uh, Shug at the driver's side Side, Tupac and the passenger side. Now, obviously, what was known at that moment was Tupac pulled up at some traffic lights on the Las Vegas Strip and another car, which was a white Cadillac, pulled up alongside and emptied the clip into the car. Tupac was hit killed he did survive for about six days i think it was six or seven days after um the initial shot went in but he wasn't conscious he'd been hit through the lungs which had filled up with blood and you know he was never going to be the same again after that which people didn't really accept because he'd also been shot like a year before this and survived that so tupac was like immortal and indestructible so for him to actually be shot again people kind of were just like he'll pull through because he didn't die immediately 
people just believed he'd pull through. Orlando Anderson was obviously the main suspect, being that he was the guy who got jumped by these guys. However, he was killed not long after this. And as were a lot of people, as you can imagine, because in these wars, that's the way it was. But one guy who was in the car didn't get killed. And unfortunately for him, he's decided to do YouTube interviews about 20 odd years later and has basically incriminated himself. Introducing Keefe D. Uh, Death Row guys were going to have a concert at the 662 Club. So we went to the 662 Club, Tupac and Shook, they didn't ever show up. So we left. So Orlando and his guys were actually waiting at this 662 Club, waiting for Shug Knight and Tupac. They didn't show up. So these guys went out looking for them. All the chicks was like, Tupac, Tupac, and he was like, hey, like a celebrity, like he was in a parade. He wouldn't even been out the window. We would have never seen him. I'm a partner boss of you. When we pulled up, I was in the front seat. You said the shots came from the back. Big Dre, Orlando. Who shot Tupac? I'm gonna keep it for the cold of the streets. It just came from the back seat, bro. So he's claiming, oh, it came from the back seat. I was in the passenger seat. I mean, you would, wouldn't you? Like, Because what he's trying to do here is get all the clout for being involved and allude to the fact that it was me, but... Yeah, it came from the back seat, and those guys just so happened to be dead. A likely story. And the fact is, he's been doing interviews about this for years now. It kind of goes back to what Chris Rock once said about if you ever want to get away with uh, a murder, just put a demo tape in the pocket of whoever you kill, because police don't care about rapper deaths. These are interviews from years ago. Keefe D, I feel remorse for Tupac, but attacking Orlando gave us the green light. This is four years ago. How it took this long is insane. So this is the mugshot of Keefe D, aka Dwayne Davis and he's taken into custody by Las Vegas detectives he's 60 years old and the, the brother of uh, Tupac Mo Prem, who is his stepbrother has actually slammed detectives and said we've been through decades of pain they've known about this guy he's been running his mouth for years so why now? That is the interesting thing they've clearly known about this guy for a long time w what, what has changed? Is someone not paying up to the cops who were keeping him you know safe? Maybe there's no way that they've just randomly thought, you know, we'll get him now. This was four years ago he was given these interviews. So Chief Deputy District Attorney Mark D. Giam Como has described Davis as an on-ground, on-site commander who ordered the death of Shakur. So while he may not have been the one to pull the trigger because he was in the front, as he said, it came from the back, he's probably handed them the gun. And I think there's even footage of him saying that. So now... Whether or not he pulled the trigger, he was in command, and they are going to charge him as if he ordered the death. For 27 years, the family of Tupac Shakur has been waiting for justice. This guy is bragging as if <laughs> we finally cracked it. Mate, the guy was doing YouTube interviews four years ago, basically telling you, leading every breadcrumb there, yeah, it was me. To announce the arrest of 60-year-old Dwayne Keith Davis, a.k.a. Keefe D., for the murder of Tupac Shakur. Well, I know there's been many people who did not believe that the murder of Tupac Shakur was important to this police department. I'm here to tell you that was simply not the case. <laughs> you can't give it, I told you so, and it took you 20 fucking seven. All right, that was good. That was actually pretty good. Um, he broke down a lot of good stuff. Um, I seen a couple of other interviews earlier today when he was talking about Biggie had paid somebody a million dollars to kill Tupac. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm from North Jersey, and I was out. I was I was around that time when Biggie was alive. Tupac, I was I was in all that. You know what I'm saying? I was a street guy. I ain't gonna lie, I was in the streets. Didn't know Biggie personally, but let's be clear here. Biggie Smalls was a street dude, but he wasn't a, a mob boss. He wasn't he wasn't a made man where he can give somebody a million dollars to kill somebody. No. Absolutely not. Who was was his boss was the record head now he him 
Puff? Absolutely. Now, I'm not saying Puff did that. But Puff had the power to do that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know. Puff is a real gangster. Not to say Biggie wasn't. But Puff's a real gangster. Ain't no, ain't no, 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 uh, ain't no, ain't no bitch in him. Trust and believe. He's a hundred percent a real gangster. You know what I'm saying? Do I believe that they had paid off somebody to, to kill Tupac? No. No. I think that me personally, this is why I feel. I'm not saying that that didn't happen. But because I look at it like this, I, I'm just going to say this. If Puff paid someone to kill someone, then why would he let that other person live? That don't make sense. If you are a mob, if you are, if you, if you do something criminal, right? And you involve yourself. So obviously you have to involve yourself because you have to give the money or whatever you want to give to this person, right? So you give this person money to, to eliminate somebody, right? Why would you let that person live after that? If you are true, real mob dude, you ain't letting him live either. He getting, he getting executed or whatever you want to call it. He's getting up out of here too. Because it's going to always lead back to you. Even all this whole time. So guess what? If he was involved, what do you think Keefe D is going to do now? And well, obviously he's 60 years old. But what is he going to do? You think he's not going to say anything? You think he's not? He said, oh, uh, he's going to run his mouth. Because they he guys like did, him, really. Yeah. Guys like him, they like sensationalism. So if, 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 if Puff did have something to do with it, it's going to come out now. You know what I'm saying? But here's the thing, and I, I know people are going to hate me for saying this. The, the energy you bring around you is what's going to happen to you. That's just a, the hundred percent. If you hang around gangsters, just 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 understand, gang, gangster shit is going to happen to you. If you hang around priests, nine times out of ten, you're going to be praising the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Or doing they're going to be doing other stuff. But anyway, little joke there. But the point I'm making is, I'm not faulting Tupac for his death. But you got to understand when you center your whole life around violence and criminal crime and, and fighting and talking crazy and guns and shooting and all this stuff. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? You know what I'm saying? You think it's just going to be OK? Well, no. Some people would say you wasn't right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Some people would say. Birds and flock together. Yeah. Some people would say, well. He was, uh, he was a good dude. Other people would say, what do you think the ball that got jumped would say? So, go ahead, bro. I'm good. I think, I think, here's the thing, right? So, speaking on the Biggie issue, right? Um, I spoke about this at my job a little bit just to get a little bit of insight on people's thoughts you know what i'm saying so so i will know how to when we talk about it on the show you know hear people's opinions and how we are delegate what how we gonna talk about it or whatever on the show and um a lot of people say like yo yeah you know big was in the street but because i know a few people that work that i work with that actually were around at that time when Big was popping and they lived in New York and they actually seen him a few times. So they was like, uh, yeah, you know, he was, uh, you know, he was out there like that, but he wasn't no like um, heavy street dude. He was just more like a corner boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he was out there 
He'll sell his, his little something, something real quick, get his money, and be out. So that's what they say he was. Um, my point is that um, I feel like there's a lot of conflicting stories about both parties. There's conflicting stories about Pac. There's conflicting stories about Big. You know what I mean? And then there's the middle story, which is nine times out of ten could be the truth. You know, no one really knows what happened except the people that were actually there. Now, mind you, everybody that could have told you exactly what happened in detail, most of those people are dead. They died. Yeah, one cat, he was sick. He passed away back in, uh, what was it, 2012 or something like that? I forgot, I forgot the actual date, so don't quote me on that, but... He was one, there was a few guys that were around that were there. There's one guy from the uh from Tupac's camp. He said he looked dude right in the eyes when they uh pop his pop uh Tupac. You know what I mean? He died. So I feel like the only people that could really, really give you the in-depth story about what really happened is the people that were actually there and witnessed it themselves. Keefe D, he was there. You know what I mean? He's telling the truth for the most part. But, you know what I mean? It's just crazy how he waited such a long period of time to, like, you know, come out with it. So what I'm feeling is that he got some sort of deal going with the police because, like, there's no way you could know this guy's around walking the face of this earth for this long and you haven't grabbed him and pulled him in knowing that he got information. So when I was looking at these other people, these other creators' uh, topics on the matter, right, they were saying that, oh, well, you know, they was waiting to get more information and to dig a bigger case, you know, to let him keep talking, do these interviews, blah, blah, blah. Let him drop the book because he dropped the book. And, you know, just all these, all these things so they can sum it up. So I was like, man, so you mean tell me you couldn't sum it up the time that that happened? You couldn't sum it up when he first started talking? The guy was incriminating himself from the gate. You know what I mean? He was he was giving out information to Vlad. He's giving out information to these other uh, smaller smaller platforms. You know what I'm saying? So like, I felt like between the Vlad and whatever he was doing over these other platforms, they could have got him right there. You know what I mean? But. Like I said, you know, like we ain't no private investigators or nothing. You know, everybody has their own theory of what took place. But you you become who you hang around with. So if you are putting yourself around people that bring that type of energy, then you're going to become that energy as well, regardless if you had a hard life or not. You know what I mean? Um, both parties, with Big and with Pac, you know what I'm saying? They put themselves in different spaces, you know? Being as so influential as they was with hip-hop, because I was a fan of both of them, you still put yourself in that same space with ruthless dudes, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I feel like, you know, they they basically, they basically uh, ended their lifespan once they started indulging with these type of people. Now, mind you, you know, you know what I mean? When you get into that lifestyle, when you get into the hip hop and you make money at that time, you know what I mean? That was glorified, you know? So it's kind of hard for, you know, for us to say, well, they shouldn't go and do this and that. When you're a young person and you, all that money's in front of you, you're going to want to put yourself around those type of people on top of that have the protection to back you up. You know what I'm saying? So, you you know, at, at the end of the day, you can't really fault them neither because, you know, they were living their best life, you know, but, 
you know, their best life led, led them to an early out. You know, both of those guys were young when they died. You know what I mean? They didn't even really get a chance to enjoy the fruits of their labor. You know what I mean? For both of them. For both of them. And it's a shame because, you know, if they were around today, hip-hop definitely would not be, well, at least New York hip-hop itself would not be where it's at right now. At least at least I, I, I can firmly say that. There'd be a lot of guys that I feel wouldn't be where they're at as far as the hierarchy of rap if it, if if those guys are still around because then they, I feel like it'll be to me as far as New York hip hop probably will be more of a balance you know what I mean or you'll have big then pop for the west and then you have these other guys just fall in line like that but hey you know like I said man you know um I hope the you know the families of both sides get some closure you know on the matter and that's about it really all right man well it is what it is man uh they caught him now so we'll see what happens you got it here see you peace